have this protocol selected, the um, I personally like to remove the crown first. Usually, it comes out with uh, with just with uh, universal forceps. The sectioning sectioning is done in a buccolingual direction, and I use a 702 long, okay, with a, an electric handpiece. But you can use almost any handpiece. Section the crown portion through the root. Make sure that you're sectioning it. And what I'll do next, I'll use a medium-sized elevator just to mobilize the root. I don't need to extract them. These are not very curved roots. I'm just going to mobilize them. I'm going to place my elevator between the adjacent teeth and the root, and sometimes in between those two section part, just mobilize them. And when they're uh, adequately mobile, you can use your root forceps and remove each root separately. Okay, so these this is under the best circumstances. Now, in the book, you'll read about plan C and plan D all the way to plan E, and you have to read the book to know what these are uh, because you need to have some alternatives. It's not enough for you to have knowledge. It's not enough for you to have knowledge and, 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 and uh, know everything in theory. You need to have a certain plan and some options. Now, when you section the root, make sure to be very, very careful not to go to the lingual plate, okay? The lingual plate, the buccal plate is already missing, but make sure not to go to the lingual plate. So there's nothing wrong with sectioning the root and stopping short of the uh, lingual part of the tooth and ju just making sure, number one, you can lose bone, number one, that is going to be crucial for later on. Number two, if you're dealing with second uh, lower molars, you have to be careful of lingual nerve injuries, okay? So just be careful, know the anatomy, and split only the root with minimal damage to the, to the, uh, to the adjacent, to the surrounding bone. Now, all of this is explained very well in the book. Now, once you look at the buccal plate, uh, pretty much what we thought was happening is happening, and there's a very significant defect in the buccal plate uh, there's no bridge of bone, uh, and aren't you happy that a full thickness flap is reflected because now it's very easy to debride it. I can protect the soft tissue with an elevator. Make sure that this defect is very, very clean, and you see this is a pretty extensive defect. The question is, again, what is the strategy to regenerate it? Because if you're just going to pack this um, socket with bone graft, some of it may come out. There's not going to be any structural support. So what I'd like you to consider is the compartment grafting technique. Now, leading to this up to the seminar, uh, most of you received an email from me that includes uh, a, uh, an attachment uh, with some more reading material about the compartment grafting technique, which is really basically the most simple way to graft a socket that has some deficient walls and basically you're grafting each component each compar compartment separately so if you're missing the buccal plate i place a membrane on the buccal plate without draping it over the occlusion i want to make sure that you understand because there are different ways to to do that and and some doctors are trained in the school of thought that if you have a missing buccal plate the member needs to be pretty long, needs to drape over the socket and also go into the lingual or palatal aspect. And I, I believe it's sometimes complicated. Membranes are exposed. We're leaving the socket to heal in uh, secondary intention healing, meaning we're not covering anything. So the compartment grafting technique worked very well for me. So how does it work? You need to have a membrane placed over the defect. And if you take a piece of collagen membrane a, a resorbable membrane, uh, maybe a long that resorbs a little bit longer. And there are many membranes on the market. Uh, Biomend Extend is one of them. Uh, there are membranes by uh, BioHorizons. There are many membranes out in the market. Some have no name. As long as it's made out of collagen and it's relatively stiff, you need to be able to trim it and place it over this deficiency. Now, once you put it in and you need to trim it, and you take it in and out, and you find finalize the, the, the size of this membrane to be beyond the, the borders of the defect, what's going to happen 
is this membrane is going to get hydrated and from the blood and the saliva, and it's not going to be usable anymore. It's not going to be very stiff anymore. So the little trick that you can you can use is use the paper inside your suture material and cut out a little template and use that to adjust the paper membrane. Okay, it's just a template. We're not going to use that. And once you reach the right size, place it next to a sheet of collagen, an actual collagen membrane that we'll use. Uh, shape it uh, the same way because the template was uh, made to fit the particular mem particular defect that you have. And all you need to do is take now the collagen membrane and put it in position. It's going to fit perfectly, right? Because it's based on the template. So place your membrane beyond the defect. Beyond the defect. In this case, I think I placed at least two, two of those membranes just because there was a big deficiency. And that's really the first step that you need to take. After you debrided the socket, you can use some saline irrigation. You completed the buccal wall uh, based on the compartment technique with a collagen membrane or two. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're using PRF, you can use a PRF membrane in addition to that. And then use the bone graft of your choice. In this case, I'm using an allograft material, and I'm using some platelet-rich fibrin mixed up all together, adding some antibiotics. And all is placed in the socket and condensed. Now, I'd like you to use light condensation when you're missing the buccal plate, because what happens if you apply too much force, you may push some of the bone graft through the defect and push the membrane out. So the, the forces need to be light to moderate. And again, if you're using the compartment technique, you now completed the buccal wall. You need to put something on top, something that is going to be the ceiling of the socket. And you can use either a collagen plug cut into a disc, or in this case, I'm using a PRF plug. And, and they work quite the same. Of course, the PRF has a, um, a biologic advantage of um, inducing better, faster healing, as far as we know, as far as, far as I can tell. And you want to stabilize it. And the simplest way to stabilize it is with gut sutures. And I use, uh, if it looks a little bit complicated, actually, it's these are three separate sutures. Each one is the X suture. Okay, if you're not familiar with the X suture, you can look up some of my videos online. They explain this pretty well. Okay, make sure that the X suture is holding the membrane in place and everything is immobilized. Okay. Now, we have a question from Paul. Uh, some say not, not to curate every socket if it's not infected in order to save the PDL. Stem cells when, when grafting. There, there are, uh, is there any site that you would not curate when grafting? That's a, that's a great question, Paul. So first of all, um, I don't see the benefit of leaving PDL fibers behind. I don't see any harm, but I don't see any benefit. I think we need to curette uh, the socket. Most of the time we're extracting a tooth because there's a reason for that. There's an infection that needs to be cleaned out. And really, realistically speaking, practically, you know when you cleaned everything out, when you reached uh, normal bone, healthy bone, number one. So I'm not familiar with this technique. There are sockets that I'm not going to use uh, thorough debridement and this is when I'm um, an infection has reached a very important anatomical structure it could be the sinus it could be the uh, on top of a nerve and you don't want to use your curette and damage the the uh, sinus or create a perforation that was not there or damage the nerve so these are these are the only exceptions uh Lori Laurelson is asking do you spin PRF in your office uh, the answer is yes and Paul is asking, do you find that PRF offers any benefits beyond speed of initial healing? Uh, no, it's mostly the speed. I don't see difference in the uh, bone quality later on. It's mostly the uh, faster healing. And also, it's sometimes easier to handle the graft once you mix it with, with the PRF. Okay, you, uh, Angam is asking, what antibiotics do you place with the graft that, um, uh, in this case? Uh, I use metronidazole powder. Okay. So uh, Dr. Ahmed Fuat, last question, is asking when to graft and when not to. So this is my opinion. Uh, definitely if you are missing a buccal plate, you have a significant deficiency and a big blowout, 
you should graft. But in, in reality, you should graft every socket because through grafting, you're going to min minimize the resorption. The natural resorption is going to happen afterwards. So in my opinion, every extraction socket, maybe maybe uh, with the exception of wisdom teeth, you'd like to you'd like to uh, graft. Okay, uh, Sunny is asking a very important question. How did you stabilize the membrane? Uh, I basically stabilize it just by tucking it under the flap, putting one on top of the other, and and it gets hydrated from the bleeding in the mouth and basically adheres. And it's not uh, absolutely immobile, but then when the flap is uh, positioned back, um, I didn't see many membranes moving. Okay, there's not there. You can also use uh, bone tacks, but it's a little bit of an overkill for an extraction socket. So three months later. Uh, you can tell that the healing um, occurred, and even if we didn't use primary closure at the time of extraction, we got really nice healing with good attaching keratinous tissue, and that's really the reason why we're not closing the flap primarily. So in order to, to look at it, and of course this patient is a candidate for an implant, we need to assess this bone and look at it in three-dimensional. We're going to go into the three-dimensional world so i'll take an impression of this patient and i'm going to digitize it and import it into my computer guided software 